The second commentary of the day comes from Celtic Park. Celtic up against Dundee. Our team there is in place. Pat Bonner, Rory Loy, our pitch out reporter, Kerradine Edsan, and our match commentator, Liam McLeod. Good afternoon to you, Liam. You can bring us the team news. Yeah, some fantastic games across the country covered here on Sports Sound this afternoon. Dundee looking to win this fixture for the first time since the 13th of May 2001. A double from Fabian Caballero ended Martin O'Neill's previously unbeaten record that season. Zura Kizanishvili was sent off that day as well, but they've only won one of the last 69 meetings between the clubs in all competitions. It is a fixture that Celtic have dominated. Two changes for both teams. There's a debut for Nat Phillips for the champions. He and Yang Hyun Jun come into the team. Yang made his South Korea debut in a 4-2 win over Turkey during the international window. Lager Bielka pays for his performance at Ibrox a couple of weeks ago. He drops onto the bench and of course Leela Bada is going to be out for the next four months or so after picking up an injury and training with the Israeli national team. I don't think his manager's too impressed with it. It's heart and goal. Johnston Phillips scales. He was excellent at Ibrox in the derby and Taylor at the back. Riley McGregor and Turnbull across the middle with Yang and Maida either side of Kyogo. The two Japanese players were with the Japan national team during that break as well. The Celtic bench, Bain, Lagerbilka, Palma, Holm, O, Bernardo, Hatate, Forrest and Ralston. So a bonus for Celtic to get Rio Hatate back in the matchday squad for Dundee. Karen Howley come in for McGee and Tiffany. It's Carson in goal. Kerr, Shocknessy, Lamy and Beck. Boateng will sit with Robinson, Robertson, McCowan and Howley across the middle supporting the striker Amadou Bakayoko who was on target during the international break for Sierra Leone in a 2-1 defeat in the African Cup of Nations qualifiers to Guinea. The Dundee bench, Legstons, McGee, Tiffany, Cameron, Ashcroft, Mulligan, Rudden, Silla and Lewis. The referee for the first time here at Celtic Park is Grant Irvin and the VAR this afternoon. The main VAR is Stephen Kirkland. Thank you to Liam McLeod. Good afternoon to you, Pat Bonner. Your thoughts on that Celtic team? Brendan Rodgers has a fair few injury issues to deal with. Yeah, good afternoon, Kenny. And I think the question was among um, most of the fans, would, how would this uh, defensive partnership, centre-half partnership, how would they line up? Who, who would who would get the call? I, I always thought that Nat Phillips was going to come in, but who was going to play alongside him? And I'm delighted to say this, Liam Scales, <laughs> in many ways, because... You know, against St. Johnson here, he was having a tough time. Last week, he got man of the match against Rangers, and that's when you stand up and have to be counted. It'll be a different type of game, of course, today. He'll have to a lot more of the ball. He'll be building up the game, and, and he'll have to do it. My advice to him, any young man, do it early. Get that ball away, and then go and support uh, the player that's on the ball. Uh, from a defensive perspective, he may not be asked to, to work as hard. So, so that's a big question sort of answered. And he does give balance also because he's left-footed on that side and, and, I, and I hope it goes well for him today uh, of course the injuries is a, is a big cause for concern Abada obviously added that list of, of injuries now and uh, he's going to be out for, for quite a while but they have Yang coming in uh, it'll be interesting to see if Maeda, Kyogo and Yang last a pace they've obviously been travelling they've been away obviously it's a, it's a long journey to get back and, and, and come back in and last in 90 minutes but the bench as Liam already said is huge uh, hugely important to any team now and if you look at that bench Hatati Forrest O Bernardo Palma we still have got to see what those two players the, the last two I mentioned are, are, are what they're going to be like how they're going to perform how they're going to perform in this front of this crowd but they are recognised quality players uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing them actually yeah lots to look forward to this afternoon on sports and what about your former club Dundee Rory Lloyd they made a decent start to the return to the top flight but despite Celtic's injury concerns they face a huge challenge this afternoon good afternoon Kenny yes they do indeed uh, any side coming here will face big challenges um, you know Celtic despite what some people may consider a, a relatively slow, slow start will we'll get better and better as the as the season moves on I do believe Tony Docherty will be looking to change the idea of him being known as Derek McInnes' assistant as soon as possible um, and his side's got a solid start uh, sitting sixth already on five points however given his old boss's two results against the teams from Glasgow this season he could be forgiven for maybe picking his brains on um, the defensive aspects of the game and maybe looking for a few hints and tips however 
Um, you know, those games were at home for Kilmarnock. Dundee find themselves at Celtic Park today. Uh, Johnson came here, uh, set the standard of determination, application and organisation to be able to take the three points. Um, sorry, to be able to get anything, to get a point, sorry, from the game. Um, and Dundee will need to be similar today um, in that uh, front to, to take anything against an, an expectant home crowd. Whether they line up 4-1-4-1, which I think they will, 3-5-2, 4-5-1, it will be backs to the wall. My only concern, um, you know, it looks like he's going to go with a four. Lamy and Shaughnessy, they're not the quickest. The two centre-back, I think Malachi Boateng's got a big job on his hands to screen, screen balls into Kyogo's feet. If he does decide to go in behind, I just worry a little bit about the back the, the back two central pairing for Dundee. However, they are good experienced football players um, and they'll be able to read the game. I just worry about the lack of legs at times. Um, however, we'll see how it goes. Um, and Dundee, after a solid start, um, you know, can take a lot of confidence from St Johnson's performance here and look to, to try and do the same. Well, let's hear from the Celtic manager, Brendan Rodgers. He's been speaking with our reporter, Kerry Nitsan. Hey Brendan, this is the start of a, a cracking run of fixtures mm. for you, isn't it? Uh, league, Champions League, mm. the, the real business of the season's kicking in now, isn't it? Yeah, really exciting period. We've obviously started off in the league with three wins and a draw and um, obviously a, a big result for us in our last game. So, uh, so we now have to build on that and, uh, and I'm really looking forward to the game today. Big debut today for Nat Phillips. What are you hoping for from him? What can the fans expect from him? Well, Nat's a very committed player. He's, he's obviously coming out of a, a top-level squad. He's, he's played many times for Liverpool, so his experience is going to be important for us. We've obviously lost uh, Cam in the early part of the season. Obviously, Carl moved on in the summer, so we've lost experience centre-half. So him coming in gives us that, gives us the, that leadership quality. And, uh, and like I said, he's, he's got big experience. So uh, I know he's looking forward to, to being here and, uh, and making his debut. I know he's only here short term, but if he likes it here and you like him, which I suspect you might, is there any chance that can be longer or is it just a short term deal for him? Well, I think it's just concentrating on the now, really. I think he hasn't kicked a ball for us seriously. So uh, let's see how that goes. We, 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 we needed it in the short term through till January, but we, we can assess that over time. You've got Yang in uh, for Abada, who's injured. Strong-looking bench for you as well, with Hatati coming back in, uh, um, amongst others. Just on him, I think talks have started on a, on a new contract. Is that right? And how quickly, how well are they are they going? Well, I don't. Uh, I know that uh, the club have sort of have engaged in these representatives for a number of months now. So uh, I think we really it was the case of just getting over the course of the, the summer. Um, and getting back into it. He's now very clear on what I expect and. Uh, and, and for me, he's, he's a top-class player. But um, but mentality and focus has been really good. He's now back fit. He's worked hard. He's only trained a couple of days, so and then that's what we have to be careful with him. But he'll see some action today in the game, and I'm really looking forward to working with him over a, a longer period because I think he's a real talent. Um, and uh, yeah, so so the other guys, like you say, gives us a really strong bench, and uh, and that's nice because we've had uh, quite a quite a number of injuries early part of the season Absolutely I wonder if the fans might get a wee glimpse as well of a couple of the new boys that have come in late Palma and Bernardo who are on the bench Yeah well that's the that's the plan I think that you know, certainly the, the team that will start the game will be the team that will finish it for us it's about keeping the intensity of the game uh, for as long as we can and as high as we can and that uh, and those guys coming off the bench will, will help us do that and just finally, a phrase used there, Rio had to get clearer with what you expect from him. Does that go for the whole squad as well? You've talked about an evolution, a learning, just getting to know exactly what it is that you want from the guys. Yeah, I think it is that. I think that obviously a lot of the guys uh, haven't worked with me before and uh, it's a different generation of player and a different profile. I think that sometimes when you're a young player, you can overthink it a little bit, but it's also getting used to, I suppose, my management style as well. Um, but, uh, but yeah, uh, they were fantastic in, in the game against Rangers. I think the last game here against St Johnston offered us a great chance to, to, to work out and crystallise uh, some of the, the, the items on the pitch structurally that, that maybe weren't going as well as what I would have liked. Uh, but the players have, have dealt with that really well. We've worked hard on the training ground and then you've seen the result of that against Rangers. So I think that the players from now, they have a lot more clarity on the work and can play with that freedom and discipline at the same time. Brendan Rodgers there, full commentary to come from Celtic against Dundee and Rory will bring us all the action on Open All Mics.
Good afternoon and welcome along to Celtic Park and BBC Radio Scotland Extra on digital and online, of course, at bbc.co.uk slash sportscotland. It is Celtic against Dundee as the champions look to respond to that Rangers victory in Perth in the early kickoff. As for the D, well, they've got an opportunity today to go three games unbeaten in the Premiership. That's something they didn't manage at all the last time they were in the top flight a couple of seasons back. And it's been a pretty satisfactory return to the top table for Dundee Football Club after the win over Hearts and the draw, battling draw against St Johnston last time out. The Celtic lineup then, Joe Hart in goal, Johnston, a debut for Phillips, Scales and Taylor. O'Reilly, McGregor, Turnbull, Yang and Maida with Kyogo. For Dundee, Carson in goal, Cammy Kerr. Dundee supported, of course, he was once a season ticket holder, comes back into the side. Shocknessy, Lamy and Beck. Boateng will sit. Robinson, Robertson, McHowan and Howley. And Bakayoko will lead the line for them. A goal scorer for his country during the week. The Celtic players are in their huddle in the Glasgow sunshine here. There is some grey clouds above. And it looks as though there's an easterly breeze as well as the flags flutter on the top of the main stand. So in the main here, on this frequency, it is Celtic Dundee, but I will keep you up to date with everything that's happening elsewhere in the country across the four divisions in the SPFL. Is Dundee in their dark navy blue prepared to kick off right to left. There is the first whistle. It is game on here. First whistle from Grant Irvin, who takes charge here at Celtic Park for the first time. Celtic in the green and white hoops go left to right, shooting towards the Lisbon line stand end of the stadium. And now it's back with Liam Scales, who was the man of the match in the derby against Rangers a fortnight ago. He did really well in that game. High pressure as far as the game was concerned, but also the, the atmosphere that he was up against as well as that goes out of play, long ball out for a Dundee throw-in over on that far side and as ever when you're the visiting team here you just want to get a foothold against Celtic as Packy Bonner, St Johnston did last uh, home game for Celtic here when they got away with that 0-0 Yeah and they did it very well they, they were well organised I would assume that most teams who come here would look at uh, the, the games beforehand look at how the opposition played against Celtic and may, maybe take a leaf out of their book to a point uh, obviously Dundee set up today with a sort of a back four with uh, both tanks sitting in front of them and then they've got the other four a little bit higher up the pitch supporting that main striker and Bakayoko and, uh, and, uh, and see how they get up the pitch when they have the ball Celtic will dominate possession Liam as we know Celtic in possession then first real feel of the ball and a Celtic sharp for Nat Phillips on loan from Liverpool as O'Reilly picks up and dinks it back to Alistair Johnston who missed out on the international games with Canada you might remember he was injured and had to come off at Ibrox 13 days ago it's Turnbull collects and it goes back to Scales who played in field to Phillips first chance for Packy to cast his eyes on Nat Phillips today we saw Lagerbielka really struggle as that ball from Shockness he just got back to his goalkeeper and Carson boots it forward but he just put as much onto it as he possibly could because he was under pressure from Matt O'Reilly as it comes all the way through to his opposite number, Joe Hart. Yeah, Phillips getting, getting plenty of the ball early on. He has played a couple of long balls from that sort of almost right centre-back position on the diagonal and for Kyogo running. Uh, not Hasn't come off in any way so far, but he'll have a lot of the ball. be interesting. He's a big imposing figure, I've got to say, uh, but it's about his qualities on the ball but certainly how he can build that relationship with Liam Scales also well read in defence by Lamy for Dundee and it's only half clear as Dyson Maida picks up wide on the left short ball to Taylor and now it's Turnbull to McGregor Dundee without a win in 40 attempts against Celtic it's a miserable record that they have as Scales unchallenged up to the edge of the box eventually it's just taken away from him momentarily by Ryan Howley but it breaks to the edge of the area for Turnbull Turnbull chops back onto his left side uses the right boot, low ball for Taylor low into the penalty box and it's cleared with Boateng getting in the way and then Phillips with a little header finds Scales who is brought crashing to the ground by Bakayoko and that's a free kick to Celtic over on that left hand side in the Dundee half the early exchanges here, nothing each yeah, Liam Scales 
uh, you know, had, had plenty of possession and he, he drove forward into a great area. I'm thinking, go and hit it. Go and, and, and have a go with that left foot of yours. But he checked out and made the pass uh, and eventually nothing came out of it. He's not normally scared to have a go from distance, David Turnbull, to be fair. No, I was talking about Liam Scales, actually. Oh, Scales? Yeah, <laughs> Scales, when he was in a great position. I know David Turnbull, he will definitely uh, have a go, uh, given the opportunity. But uh, your pardon. I thought you were talking about Turnbull there. It was the moment before that when well, Scales moment, strode right. unchallenged that's right. to the edge of the box. Anyway, the chance goes, and it's a Dundee free kick, and Ricky Lamy on loan from Motherwell over on this near side will take it. Left-footed ball, he just goes back to Carson. Midway inside his own half. Long ball with the right foot. There's an offside player in back of Yoko, but Cammy Kerr wasn't, and he picks up wide in the right-hand side, rolls it back. In comes the cross ball. It's on top of Joe Hart, who holds on. Wasn't the worst cross in the world either, with Zach Robinson trying to attack it around about the six-yard line. Hart holds on with both gloves, and it stays at nil-nil. It was interesting, actually, because I expected Joe Shock to see to, to play the ball himself, but he, he knocked it back to the goalkeeper and, and created a different angle, actually, and everybody was caught all, almost over there on the wrong side of the pitch, and when the goalkeeper played that long ball, uh, the, the, I th- I'm not sure who it was on the right Tammy hand Kerr side. Was was Tammy right, Kerr was yeah. He was in a great position to get the ball, and they get it under control, and eventually the ball came into the box. Joe Here, dealt with it. Here's Yang for Celtic, going one way, then the other, going down, no free kick, looked a free kick from where we are, but the referee says no, and the Welshman Owen Beck, the Dundee left back, comes away, Scales slides in to win it back in the midfield, there's Kyogo, Kyogo away from a couple of challenges, Maida to his left, eventually does, releases compatriot, Maida left-hand side of the Dundee box, level with the six now, as he turns it back to Taylor, who gathers with the undersole, rolls it into the box for Turnbull, then out to Maida on that far side, the left angle of the Dundee box. Not a great ball though, and he gives it straight to Malachi Boateng for Dundee, who's then tripped to the ground, and that's a free kick to the D on the right-hand side of their own penalty area. Yeah, I thought it was a free kick over in this right-hand side initially when Yang got the ball. I thought he was tripped actually, and it was almost in a very dangerous position just outside the corner of the box. But the referee let it go, and eventually Sully won it back and worked it and worked it. Uh, and Liam Scales is actually well stepping in to win the ball back and, and keep the pressure on Dundee first goal of the afternoon's come in League 1 and it's come for Kelty Hearts who lead Cove Rangers 1-0 Adam Corbett with the goal the first from the 3 o'clock kickoffs. here come Dundee cross ball into the penalty area it was aimed for McCowan headed away and Celtic able to scramble it up towards the halfway line where it will be met by Joe Shocknessy the Dundee skipper Takes a touch, it's a really good ball, angled with a right foot, switch to the left from McCowan, it just squirms away from him though, keeps it in play, two Celtic players around him now though, Yang and Johnston, and they gang up to win it back for the home team, and O'Reilly finds McGregor at the edge of his own box, forward to Taylor, his pass forward to the outside of the boot is cut out, but it breaks favourably back the way to Joe Hart. Yeah, was, uh, Rowley was putting the pressure on Taylor yeah it'd be interesting to see if Dundee uh, continue with that sort of can almost tactic of playing them big long diagonal yeah. balls there's a chance for Celtic Turnbull going to get Maida in behind Maida gets there goes down goal kick come off Maida last and uh, Trevor Carson just hitting Cammy Kerr in the back of the head in appreciation there almost 7 in Celtic nil. Dundee nil. the first goal in the Premiership has gone in in the three o'clock kickoffs, and it's come for Hibernian under the new manager Nick Montgomery. Now they lead at Rugby Park against Kilmarnock. Yeah, that, that was a decent run from Maeda. Kamikaze did really well actually to match him because it looked as if he was beyond him and, and, and driving down on top of the goalkeeper, but he just kept himself level with him and eventually kind of almost nudged Maeda off the ball and he, and he knocked it wide. Good defending. So Hibbs 1-0 up off the back of that excellent win at Pataudry last time out. Here's Maida for Celtic, down the left for Taylor, who's offside. And that is a free kick to Dundee, who have acquitted themselves pretty well, I would say, in the opening seven and a half minutes here. Yeah, yeah you know, it's, it's a very early in the game so far, and both teams are kind of settling into the game. But uh, what you don't want is to lose something early, uh, from, especially when you come to Celtic Park. So they'll be happy to get through that first almost sort of eight minutes or so it's Lewis Miller who's got the goal for Hibs at Rugby Park and is uh, in Celtic possession Johnston high ball to the halfway line it's Shocknessy with the header though and it will go out for a throw in on the far side for Greg Taylor to take some really 
intriguing battles going on in the Premiership this afternoon, particularly those games at Tynecastle and Fir Park. For two very different reasons, high-flying Motherwell and St Mirren going head-to-head. Hearts and Aberdeen in the capital. As I say, Hibbs leading at Rugby Park. That Ross County-Livingston match will be getting underway in just over five minutes. See, it's been credited as a Dennis OG that goal at Rugby Park in some quarters. I know Hibbs were quick to give it to Miller. It would be his first league goal for the club as Ricky Lamy picks up for Dundee midway inside his own half. Out to this near side. Long ball forward, which is cut out by Phillips. Not a great touch. McCowan seizes on it. Works the one-two, looking to try and release it wide right. He did well. He just a little give and go with Bakayoko, but he couldn't quite flight it out to that right hand side for Finn Robertson absolutely and it's back to that, Joe Hart. that was the pass wasn't it he didn't get enough on it Liam and, and uh, if he did get it over the top of Greg uh, Taylor Finley Robertson was absolutely in acres of space to get in and, and, and create something in a 1v1 with the goalkeeper Phillips with a long run forward releases it to O'Reilly at the edge of the Dundee box wide right for Yang twisting and turning looking to get on to his right side he does that plays it off Beck keeps it in play I think did that just go over the line I think the Dundee supporters over on our right hand side thought that went behind for the goal kick it's gone for a Celtic corner eventually though as we approach the 10 minute mark and Matt O'Reilly's already over it yeah I think all the ball has to be over low Always. ball quickly taken into the box and then into the side net from Taylor good spot from Matt O'Reilly wasn't it you know there was two players actually in there I think it was Kyogo and, o- and, and Greg Taylor who was in the near post nobody really kind of picking him up uh, and Matt O'Reilly picked him out low ball in uh, to Greg Taylor and he just got his, caught his feet caught up uh, just beyond the near post and knocked it wide Celtic with the opportunity through Taylor there as Dundee clear with Carson's goal kick into the Celtic half scales knocks it into the midfield it's going to break for here for Boateng who's got a really important role to play for the Dark Blues today out to this near side for McCowan who dinks it down the line they are looking to try and get Zach Robinson involved but he can't keep it in play and it's out for a Celtic throw in they'll yeah. need to retain the ball better than that if they're to get anything from this game today yeah it's interesting from Dundee though they've gone almost with, with two up front you could say maybe even actually four at times when, when they get uh, Luke McGowan and, and uh, I think it's Finley Robertson up supporting the two and it's, it's Zach Robertson and Bakayoko that's sort of almost through the middle with Bakayoko playing more over on top of Liam Scales so it'll be an interesting battle to see who comes out on top there but certainly a very progressive uh, kind of almost set up from Dundee yeah Tony Doherty's certainly not come here without threat that's for sure when you look at that front line Celtic pick up with Phillips on the halfway line making his debut for the club here's Yang in behind Johnston right hand side of the Dundee box level with the sixes cross takes a deflection headed away by Lamy only as far as Yang rolls it to Maida left hand side of the box Yang was on the overlap Maida plays it infield to Taylor back to Dyson Maida takes it down shoots and saved by Carson really good attempt there and it's brilliant play by Maida straight at Carson who didn't know too much about it point blank save from the Dundee keeper as Cammy Kerr looks to get it away and out it goes for a Celtic throw in over on the far side the first real chance of the game for the champions 12 in 0 nil. yeah wonderful wonderful play Greg Taylor involved just flicking up over the defender into the path of Maeda uh, he controls and hits it on the volley and uh, Trevor Carson didn't really know anything about it he just standing there and it comes flying off his chest uh, he was lucky that it was straight at him but that was probably Celtic's best chance in this game so far no, it absolutely is there was the Taylor one into the side netting from the unorthodox O'Reilly corner but that is the best chance the Celtic have forced so just the two goals in the three o'clock kickoff so far one in the Premiership for Hibs Will Dennis OG and that Kelty Hearts goal at Cove Rangers earlier St Johnston nil Rangers 2 Celtic come forward with scales dink to the edge of the box cleared by Shocknessy rolled back by Robinson eventually it breaks the way of Kerr over on the far side a long ball looking to try and uh, get Bakayoko involved eventually it drops off Taylor and out for a Dundee throw in just inside their own half over on that north stand side Dundee's last win here May 2001 they actually won at Ibrox a couple of months before that as well in the Ivano Benetti days what days they were 
and the Dundee supporters dreaming, that's for sure. We think back to that, Nimsadze, Kanija, Ravanelli, and others. And we're watching Cyprus play Scotland. Tanuri Kitsbaya was there as well, the Cyprus manager. The Georgian legend. They paid the price for years afterwards, obviously, literally. And here they are, back in the top flight, and looking to make an impression. As Scales comes forward and rolls it out to Maida on the touchline. Halfway inside the Dundee territory, it's moved to Taylor. Looking to work it back to Maida, it breaks the way of Robertson though, who picks up the scraps and Kerr gets it away, but only as far as Scales. They've acquitted themselves pretty well so far, Dundee, but Tony Doggerty will be looking for his players to retain the ball better than they are. Yeah, I think that's the key, isn't it? You know, they have those players higher up the pitch and... When, when, when they won the ball, they have got that target, get it to them, but they've got to hold on to it and bring people into the game higher up the pitch. Here's O'Reilly for Celtic, rolling it back the way to Johnston. And Celtic fans delighted to see him in the team because it looked as though he'd picked up another injury that might have seen him out for a few weeks at Ibrox, this Turnbull. Misunderstanding with Kyogo, who's going to chase after it over on the far side. He's on to it, but that wasn't where he wanted to be taking it into feet. Play back to Scales, forward to Turnbull, then back to Scales again. Square ball for Turnbull. Loads of space for Yang out in this near side if they can find him, and eventually they do via Johnston. Yang skips in field, good pace about him, he's at the edge of the box. Little reverse ball into the area, takes a touch off the defender, and it breaks favourably back for Trevor Carson. He'll gather on 15 minutes here in Glasgow where it's Celtic nil, Dundee nil. Yeah, lots of bodies in that central bit, he drove inside. Tried a little reverse pass. I took it to fly. It could have went anywhere actually, uh, but uh, it fell kindly for the Dundee goalkeeper. Itaro Oda has given Hearts the lead against Aberdeen at Tynecastle. 14 minutes into that one, Hearts won Aberdeen nil. Aberdeen without a win in 10 there. At Tynecastle, as Celtic come forward with Yang, right hand side of the box, drills it across, and it's cleared brilliantly. Superb defending by Dundee, because when that was fired in. It looked as though there could be some serious trouble for the visitors as it goes behind for the corner. Yeah, it was uh, Ryan Howley, I think, that, that got was, his foot yeah. in. And, he's, and hurt he's, he's hurt himself a little bit, but it was good defending. He had a he had a go tight on Turnbull as he as he drove into the box. Get his foot in there. Take the take the whack, as they say. Riley's corner is flicked away on the six-yard line. McGregor trying to keep it alive, plays it to his right for Yang. Then out to O'Reilly, level the 18. And then pass back the way to McGregor. Here's Johnston to McGregor. Dundee with everyone behind the ball. Out to Yang, who can't control. And it's out for a throw into Dundee on this near side. And against just a little period of attacking play from Celtic that Dundee have been able to weather. Yeah, so, so far Celtic have probably had most of the ball. Uh, knocking around, looking for the little openers. Uh, Dundee is almost well structured. They've got that almost holding player sitting in front of that quite tight back four, uh, and the other players then just will drift in when needed. Uh, and uh, so, sort of well organised Dundee. Stoppage in play just momentarily there. Kyogo Furahashi's he's come off. He's gone up the tunnel to get some kind of treatment. Wow. So David Turnbull has gone through the middle. Um, Kyogo, he saw a little bit of international action. A friendly win over Turkey actually started that when Maida came off the bench neither of them came on against Germany in that 4-1 win that cost Hansi Flick the German national job yeah, I, but Celtic down to 10 just now and a real concern for Brendan Rodgers yeah I just don't know what, what's happening I, I didn't see any any uh, situation that he, that he got an injury or went down it's obviously he must have either pulled something or uh, maybe that, that shoulder again that we know that has been causing him lots of problems in the past. Um, well, let's find out if we can get a little bit more. Kerdy Nidsands, our reporter here. Kerdy. Yeah, you've nailed it, Pat. It looked like his shoulder again. There was As he went off up the tunnel, it looked like it was slightly out of alignment. So I wonder if the physio team, the medical team have gone up. Maybe it's popped out again, but he has had problems with that shoulder in the past. That looked certainly from uh, where we're sitting just now as though that was the problem for Kyogo. Yeah, and I think I think they've been talking about that as as, as that injury that they, he he almost needed to get an operation on it, uh, and when it goes out so many times, 
it's, it's only a matter of time where you'll have to take time out, get the operation and, and try and recover. It won't be a huge blow to Celtic though because that's the area where where I don't think they, they went and strengthened. They've got O who's out injured, who's coming back, but they haven't strengthened in that position. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and that's a real blow. Of, of he's how coming he's, back. He's come back out. And he's coming back. So something's happened. <laughs> Well, I'll be well, delighted to see him come back out. Well, the Celtic fans clearly are. Listen to that. He's the game changer for them. And case in point, at Ibrox last time out, and he took that goal superbly well. Two of his goals this season, and Kyogo, he's got three. Two of them have been excellent. Only taken. Gift at Pitodri, you would say. It was a gift given the ball in that position. He still had so much to do. So McGregor rolls it into the Dundee box, breaks back towards Yang from O'Reilly. Yang goes down, Dundee clear. Yeah, it was a good play, great play, lovely little bit of pass and good run from O'Reilly and Yang coming in. I thought he could have maybe just played it first time, take the shot on first and he tried to control, but he was travelling with too much speed and he was unbalanced. There's a chance oh. off the post! Well, that came down the right-hand side, Celtic coming close and Carson is absolutely elated to see that bounce off his left-hand post and away to safety for Dundee. Celtic cranking it up now, though. Yeah, and I, th I think actually that took a little deflection, you know, uh, when Matt O'Reilly, it looked as if he was going to try to bend it in with his left foot, uh, can almost round the right hand side of the goalkeeper, he gave him the eyes and then hit it into that near post area, but it might have just taken a little deflection. It's definitely because, taken a touch, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah because uh, Trevor Carson was beaten all ends up and, it, and, and the post saved him. Celtic having a couple of opportunities just in the last few minutes. As they look to make the breakthrough, 20 in, nil-nil. Here's Phillips in the centre circle. Stepping across halfway. Rolling it to his right for Johnston. Forward to O'Reilly. And back to Phillips. For Celtic beginning their Champions League campaign on Tuesday night when they take on Feyenoord in Rotterdam. Looking to get in the right frame of mind here. Yang for Celtic on the right, just plays it straight off Beck, who's then brought to the ground by Yang. No foul though. Here's Johnston, Celtic have it back, Yang giving chase, but that's just going to squirm away from him. And behind for the goal kick to Dundee, and it will remain goalless here at Celtic Park. Yeah, big opportunity there, actually, and uh, I did look, maybe a free kick, but the referee let it go to, to Celtic's delight, and, and uh, Matt O'Reilly was in a great position just to play a lovely little pass, but he just overhits it for Yang, who would have been absolutely straight in and top of goal, because there was not a defender in sight. Uh, he just overhits that pass, that little bit of detail, you know, taking care of that final pass, I think that's been sort of maybe wanting in a silly team for the, for a number of weeks now Louis Moult has given Dundee United the lead at Capelo against Morton, Dundee United 1, Morton 0 it's 1-0 to Annan at home to Sterling Albion Tommy Goss has got the goal in League 1 and Montrose 1-0 up on F or Edinburgh City uh, Quinn goal is then 1 0 up and in League 2 East 5 1 Clyde 0 and Stennis Muir 1 Stranraer 0 in the Premiership earlier 2 0 Rangers at St Johnston goal is here at Celtic Park leads for the Edinburgh clubs as McGregor evades the challenge at the edge of the Dundee box finds Turnbull takes the touch and almost broke to Maida and it breaks down for Celtic as it's booted away to safety down that right hand side by Finn Robinson for Dundee and out for a Celtic throw in just over did it there Celtic and, uh, initially Callum McGregor ha has the ball he kind of dropped the shoulder went by somebody I'm going to, he's going to hit it no he takes another touch going to hit it again no and then he passes it uh, and uh, the, the eventually the opportunity to take on the strike was gone but uh, yeah listen they, they've been creating decent opportunities but the decision making just in that final third is a little bit lacking at the moment from Celtic but Dundee's struggling to get a hold of the ball now they're, they're kind of almost pinned back in their own half and they're not getting up the pitch there's the goalkeeper kicking it away and yep. giving the possession back to Celtic out for a throw in on this near side and Alistair Johnston want the ball girl to give the ball back to him more quickly than he, she eventually did and Johnston We'll throw it to Phillips who takes it for a jaunt into the Dundee half on this near side and he'll roll it out to Yang on the touchline over hits the pass for Johnston and behind it goes 
for the goal kick. You, the one thing about the Celtic team of the last couple of years, and you know, we, we it must be frustrating for Brendan Rodgers if people keep comparing his team to that of Ange Postecoglou, but they were ruthless, weren't they? When they got into those attacking areas, yeah. they were ruthless, and that just hasn't been the case so far this no, season. No, no, and, and that I think it will come because. Uh, well, it has to come when you yeah, look at the quality of the squad. The quality of the squad, and I quite like their intensity of work rate, uh, closing things down. I, I can see, uh, obviously, they're they're uh, back to that getting that ball in quickly from throw-ins and and free kicks and so on. Because that was a big, big feature of the Celtic team last uh, couple of years, also under Ange. And I think that's probably been demonstrated. Uh, and I think the ball yeah. girls and boys will have to be yeah. tuned here's it. O'Reilly though to Kyogo good footwork from him it just evades him as it's put behind for the corner but you do sense the goal's coming for the champions here Dundee hanging on 24 in at 0-0 yeah and listen they have quality you mentioned that they've taken a short uh, corner I'll come back to it well it's been played back to McGregor here's Johnston and then Turnbull surveys the Dundee box again the dark blues of everyone behind the ball as Maida gets it into stride down the left, plays it in low, and it's cleared by Kerr. And out for a Celtic throw and level with the edge of the D of the Dundee box, wide in the Celtic left. Yeah, ball that, back the way to McGregor. That's right, Liam. That intensity of they keep that intensity up is very difficult for the opposition to live with it. And the opening will come, and, and they've got the quality on the pitch that somewhere along the line somebody will make the right decision. McGregor, it's a lovely ball by McGregor. Maida kills it on the chest, tries to pull it back, and then Carson, combination of Carson and Shocknessy, prevents Celtic from getting in behind there, and it's back in the gloves of Trevor Carson again as we approach the 25 minute mark at 0 0. Yeah, that's about six times now, I would say, that Celtic have got into great positions, and just that final little ball uh, that, that maybe they've just taken an extra touch or just overheaded. Uh, and that, uh, but uh, you can see that you know they're, they're in total control of the game at the moment. Will Dennis own goal as Hibs 1 0 up at Kilmarnock. Ayutara uh, Oda goal has Hearts 1 0 up on Aberdeen. And it's goalless in the other three o'clock Premiership kickoffs, including the later kickoff, Ross County Livingston, 15 minute delay for the kickoff there. So they're just on nine minutes. We played 25 here as. O'Reilly moves it back to Scales and plays it short to McGregor in the Dundee half. Dundee cannot get a hold of the ball. They cannot get anywhere near the halfway line here right now. This is hard work for them. Tony Doherty down there, arms folded, watching on at the right corner of his technical area as Brendan Rodgers is to his left. And there is Yang rolling it back to Phillips. He Phillips then squaring it to Scales, left of the circle. Yeah, almost like a combination of bodies. Uh, from, from Dundee getting them all back behind the ball yep. and Selig taking bad touches here's Yang on the right hand side he's got it here left footed low effort is into the side net he's wanting a corner didn't look like it came off a Dundee defender to be fair and it goes behind for the goal kick and I think there's a few of Yang's teammates are wondering where the cross came yeah he created good space for himself just dropped the shoulder back onto his left foot uh, and then just almost didn't get good connection uh, on the strike uh, from from a from a decent angle, I've got to say, and tries to take the goalkeeper on the near post and hits into the side net and well wide of the post. Rio it's Hitati been a feature away. of the game. Yeah, Rio Hitati away for a little warm up, being warmly received by the Celtic supporters off to our left. Yeah, well, when you have that quality on the bench, obviously it's the players that's on the pitch will know that it's only a matter of time if they don't, uh, you know, do do the right type of work and the quality is missing then they'll bring them off the bench to, to replace them and uh, yeah Hatati just fits that bill so well good to see him back from injury Mark McKenna has given our broth the lead against the Adrianians in the championship 1-0 to the Lichties at Gayfield remember Partick Thistle with that very impressive 4-0 win at Air United last night here is Phillips to Johnston out wide right for Yang Yang being faced here by Beck, but given away, and it's not a great start to proceedings as Yang, a lot to live up to, Leal Abada, such a goal threat down the right-hand side for Celtic, of course they Jota able to play there last season as well, it must be frustrating for Celtic and for Jota that he is cast aside by his new club in Saudi Arabia, his Dundee pick up, yeah. 
they obviously must have a lot lot good a lot of quality out there when they can do that actually it's just a, it's just a bizarre one isn't it is that long ball out to the right is headed in field by Kerr but it goes straight into the Celtic box and straight to Joe Hart but at least Dundee up the pitch even yeah. if it was just briefly yeah but they, they've got to do better when they get into those areas you know you don't get up the pitch too often against Celtic so when you get there you've just to, got to think about long it ball Maida's in behind the defence brilliant first touch and he scores <laughs> smashes it home offside. with the left but the flag goes up and the assistant sees that as offside it's a wonderful tape by Dyson Maida the goal doesn't stand not yet anyway yeah it was a he looks so far beyond the defence that you're saying he must he must be in an offside position he would at least 10 yards uh, you know uh, beyond it was a good ball good run whether it's the timing of the run was slightly out but it was a great take and finish uh, and that that was quality across the goalkeeper giving him not a not an earthly but it has been checked of course as we know all these goals will be checked uh, and that but he did look well beyond that defence I would be surprised if he's not offside the offside is the one thing that is uh Yes, definitive with the VAR so we'll wait and see what Stephen Kirkland who's the video assistant on duty for this game makes of that the match official Grant Irvin standing at the edge of the Dundee box with the Dundee keeper Trevor Carson who's waiting for the first news of whether this goal is going to stand or not dies in mind that's a lovely ball over the top of the Dundee defence he raced in behind beautiful control set himself and smashed it into it the must bottom be, reverse right hand corner yeah Liam it must be tight when they're taking so long yeah. to actually check it but and, and if he's onside if he is onside then defensively that's poor decision making from Dundee because it was a straight run and a straight pass from distance one thing you do is either close the ball down don't allow the player to, to play that pass or track the runner they did neither and here we go yeah, yeah, offside, offside stands no goal stays nil nil a let off for Dundee so maybe it's been a good decision good defending then when he's offside uh, we'll give him the benefit of the doubt so it remains nil nil and dies in my that continues to wait for his first goal of the season Carson with a long free kick right footed it's uh, flicked on by Bakayoko but Celtic get it away it's come back from Kerr's header towards Bakayoko but it's now with McGregor out to that left hand side for Taylor and infield for Scales he goes back to his goalkeeper yeah there's been no real uh, cause for concern between Scales and uh, Nat Phillips so far in this game both of them look fairly comfortable Alistair Johnston giving chase Carson reads it and comes out and elects to put it out for a throw in on this near side but knowing how quickly Celtic like to get things back underway he's to scamper back onto his goal line here's O'Reilly with the cross headed away by Lamy and picked up by Robinson the shirt pulled there by McGregor the referee doesn't think so Celtic play on right hand side Johnston oh, brilliant ball God, into that corridor cross. between the six yard line and the keeper but Carson holds on and on 31 and a half it stays Celtic nil Dundee nil yeah it was a great ball you know and it was one of those inviting balls for somebody just to get across that near post the goalkeeper was almost waiting and waiting and waiting for the ball to come into his area uh, and nobody got across and, and it was an easy take at the end up but uh, it's always dangerous for a goalkeeper do I go into the line of the ball do I stay on my post uh, and, and cover it just in case somebody goes there 2-0 Montrose now in League 1 against Edinburgh City 1-1 for for Spartans in League 2 the goals there from Ross and Allen after Forford had taken the lead Stennis Muir 2-0 up on Stranraer also in League 2 in the Premiership then earlier St Johnston 0 Rangers 2 goalless here at Celtic Park Hearts 1 Aberdeen 0 Kilmarnock 0 Hibernian 1 goalless Motherwell St Mirren and Ross County Livingston that game in Dingwall 15 minutes behind the others long ball for Maida to chase Cammy Kerr's the covering Dundee player and he gets there first but it's at the expense of another Celtic corner as the champions continue to turn the screw on the dark blue half of the City of Discovery here yeah they'll take a quick Celtic yeah it's now with Turnbull back to McGregor rolls it short to Johnston Johnston to the right-hand side of the Dundee box. Here's Yang taking on his man. McCowan pulls it back and it's away. 
by Lamy on the six yard line out for a throw into Celtic on this near side this is level with the Dundee 18 ball back the way to McGregor Dundee holding on up against the ropes though yeah I just wonder if Sally do get that goal will they be able to continue doing what they're doing uh, here's Phillips charges to the edge of the box comes off Lamy and then eventually with Kyogo lurking it comes back to Carson there was a nervy little moment there and Phillips got into the shooting position it's the same position on the right hand side of the box that Liam Scales found himself on the left hand side of the box earlier that Packy felt he should have had a go yeah, Phillips did, did but he kind of scuffed at it <laughs> he did didn't he he took a winder at it and, and, it, and it just nearly fell into the path of, of Kyogo uh, but just didn't quite but at least he had a go but uh, from, from a point of view of Celtic they've dominated this half but they haven't actually forced uh, Trevor Carson into the, the big saves that you would expect uh, he had that one that came flying off his chest from that he didn't know much about it but he hasn't had to work very hard and all of the other opportunities is really down to Celtic not having the, the final quality long ball for Dundee aimed for Robinson but he can only put it out for a Celtic throw in and Dundee really haven't I can't remember the last time they strung more than two passes together no and, and they had a great opportunity a, a wee while ago just down this left hand side the left back Owen Beck gets the ball and he had targets up front looking for somebody to make a run and what happened he ends up turning back back to the centre half back to the goalkeeper the goalkeeper kicks it long they end up losing possession uh, and they have those extra players higher up the pitch that, but they need to move they need to get into positions here comes Celtic again down the left it's Maida leading the charge up against Kerr gets the cross ball in but it's too close to Carson and he holds on in his near post heading towards the final 10 minutes of the first half at Celtic Park 0-0 yeah well I'll tell you what if Dundee gets in at half time and, and not, not letting Celtic score they'll have achieved something because uh, they've been totally outplayed in this game uh, and I think it's just a combination of, of Celtic just not having that final quality in, with, with the final pass or the final effort uh, and it just hasn't sort of worked Packy. for them but as, uh, Dundee have you know, they, they've worked hard but, but that's about it how does the Celtic performance compare to the St Johnston game I think it's more intensity uh, I think that they're, they're, they're almost in, in decent positions just that final final piece I think uh, I think in that game they played it was more deeper they were playing from the back and, and it was slow I think today the intensity is a bit higher Liam good play by Ryan Howley there he took the ball out of defence drive up to the halfway line into the centre circle and he's brought down by scales I think it was in the end and it's a Dundee free kick and that just takes the pressure away for a while the man on loan from Coventry from Wales under 21 international at the age of 19 so he's got something about him that's a Dundee free kick which Lamy's over could have been a Dundee player a couple of seasons ago Ricky Lamy but ripped up the contract having signed a pre-contract before that from Motherwell's Dundee free kick to the left of the box two oh, pass by Beck oh, chance he's got a score. and the two chances for Dundee there Robinson at the second but it was brilliant play by Owen Beck down the left to pull it back into the six yard area and somehow they haven't been able to turn it on target and score and Celtic come away in the counter you can't miss chances like that against this team in this venue and it stays nil-nil yeah it was this was a brilliant chance fell to me hit it first time I think it was Luke, Luke McCowan maybe uh, did it fell to him not, I'm not 100% sure if it was Luke McCowan but it's certainly and it, and it smacks off the post uh, and with, with Joe Hart beaten a uh, big, big chance for Dundee, uh, totally against the run of play. It was just a ball played into the box, uh, and uh, Sully just failed to deal with it uh, properly. And uh, th eventually, th the ball breaks uh, into that near post area and uh, off the post. Sully get off the hook. I think it was McCowan because it was Beck down the left hand side. Celtic giving it away. It's dreadful control from back of Yoko, though. It does break back into Dundee possession in the centre circle with. Boateng but that will give them belief that they can get at the Celtic side despite the fact they've been completely outplayed in the game and it's, it's interesting you know we've said it so many times you can be outplayed outplayed but from a set piece you've always got an opportunity they played it short then played it into the box and then the, on the second ball uh, they, they got into a, into a place an area where they, where they could threaten a Celtic goal uh, and that's the case in all games set pieces are so important goalless here 
at Celtic Park and uh, it's going to be a Celtic free kick over on the far side it's beyond the midway point of the Dundee half and David Turnbull has the ball in his hands and he's going to be joined by Matt O'Reilly here and this is an opportunity pack it's actually about level with the edge of the D by the time it's taken yeah it's about it's about uh, movement it's also about quality of, of that ball into the box uh, I don't think they, they can have a have a shot on target this is just almost level with the corner of the box so uh, it'll be a ball played in what pace into a, an area for somebody to go and attack Dundee will have to defend well this is a crucial time in the game seven minutes to half time It'll be a long seven minutes for Dundee he would think here's the free kick for Celtic O'Reilly into the box is flicked away by Kerr on the six yard line kept alive by Johnston rolling it back to Yang and then to the edge of the centre circle for Taylor remember Rangers winning earlier on to go back to within a point the Celtic of this game in hand as it comes to Johnston on the right level with the six long deep looping ball in two Dundee players collide inside the area McGregor though has it pinched off him by Robertson the Dundee youngster on that right hand side it's a long ball he's trying to get McCowan in Joe Hart comes a long way from home uses his knee to get it up towards halfway but it will be collected here by Bakayoko but he's lost out now it's Kyogo looks off the pace Bakayoko as Celtic come down the right with Yang brilliant backtracking by Beck who claims goal kick and that's exactly what's happened there brilliant defending by Owen Beck yeah re really uh, energetic getting back uh, obviously testing his pace Yang up against him uh, but, he, but he matched him and he got his tackle in on the side the goal kick which is crucial so St Johnston come here and get a point a couple of weeks ago St Mirren and Motherwell managed a point here in the closing weeks of last season as well and plus the Coglu didn't lose a single domestic match inside Celtic Park Brendan Rodgers record here was pretty good as well in his first spell as Carson clips the goal kick forward with the right foot underneath it is Johnston breaks to Turnbull final five minutes of the first half here nil-nil here's Maida with that goal chopped off for offside out to Taylor on the overlap left foot cross comes in headed clear by Shocknessy and nicked away by McCowan from Johnston to the halfway line Phillips with the header finds O'Reilly and he goes all the way back to Joe Hart it's now played short there to McGregor up towards a bit the centre circle area he finds Taylor scales to his left Taylor left foot side football for Turnbull gets it straight back goes to left out of the Scotland squad for that double header this month Phillips plays it to Johnston there's two areas of the Scotland squad where they are very well stocked indeed scales taking it forward rolls it with the left foot out to Maida level with the Dundee 18 short ball to Taylor here goes back to scales Scales taking his time over it. Turns it back to McGregor. Left to right of the circle for Phillips. Yang out on this near side. And he goes back to Nat Phillips. Wearing the number six up towards the edge of the Dundee box. Nobody coming to meet him. Now it's Kyogo looking for space to shoot. He does. Blocked by Shocknessy. Then picked up by Robinson over on that right hand side as he tries to get Dundee up the pitch. Yeah. He's done really well. Holds it up. Moves it back to Kerr and then field to Shocknessy it's almost like they're so preoccupied with the movement of Kyogo Furuhashi and maybe one or two others that the centre backs are strolling up to the edge of the Dundee box unabated yeah well that's that's the thing the front two have got to do a little bit more work to stop them doing that but in saying that they're not really opening them up uh, you know when they when they go forward um, nobody's jumping out to, to sort of almost leave a space so they're sitting in their position making it very difficult for Celtic Taylor to Scales, Celtic attacking again, running out of time and they want to score in this first half though. Taylor for O'Reilly, back out to Taylor, back to Scales, short ball in towards Maidat, cut out by Boateng, he was screening the Celtic attack and he clears it out for a Celtic throw in, that's come off a Celtic man last I think, out for a Dundee ball over on the far side which Finn Robertson goes out to take yeah that'll just slow the game down for Dundee you know obviously with about three minutes to go until half time it would be crucial for them to get in 
so they can slow it down now take their time yeah, he's just left it for Kerr to take just eats away a few more seconds two minutes of the opening 45 to go long throw in up the line looking for Robinson Celtic head clear then Maida with the left foot clears his lines it's going out of play for a Dundee throw in on the far side yeah there's no doubt that Brendan Rodgers will have to maybe sit the players down talk to them about that final ball that final pass a little bit more composure in around the edge of the box or getting it, they got into some great positions in that first half but certainly there it was either a, a mistimed control maybe an extra touch uh, the wrong pass overweighted uh, and uh, it's ball was still rolling says the ref Celtic tried to take a quick free kick our growth have gone 2-0 up against the Rionians McKenna earlier Hilton with the second but they are down to 10 men Ricky Little has been sent off good luck with Dick Campbell at half time Ricky as uh, Celtic pick up with Phillips down the right hand side that goes out of play for a throw in regardless 10 man Arbroath 2-0 up on Rionians Dundee United leading Morton 1-0 on the other goal in the championship scored this afternoon goal is here in the Premiership Hearts heading into half time with a 1-0 lead against Aberdeen as Hibs have it, Kilmarnock 0-0, Motherwell St Mirren and Ross County, Livingston. As Phillips goes down, I think there's a head knock there. Phillips has, uh, I think, caught Robinson or vice versa. And they're both yeah. just getting themselves back to their feet. Yeah, there's one of them where, where he's jumped the ball and that Phillips and uh, Robertson's just kind of almost then flicked his head back and I think both of them clashed heads, but no damage done. No. 2-1 Kelty Hearts, Cove Rangers... I think uh, managing to pull one back having gone 2-0 down in that one in League One long ball for Robinson to chase for Dundee but he's never getting there and it comes right through to Joe Hart Elgin 1-0 up on Dumbarton 2-0 Stenersmuir against Stranraer as the goals begin to go in across the country two minutes of injury time or stoppage time have been added here at Celtic Park nothing each here's Maida scampering down the left looking for the cross takes the touch off the defender and behind for a Celtic corner over on that north stand side they attack the goal to the right yeah, the first of two minutes of stoppage time in a hurry they get a ball in uh, to the box maybe that's what's wrong there and too much of a hurry at times and around the edge of the box in comes the corner Carson committed himself but it's headed away by Bakayoko and it breaks to the edge of the area and Dundee are able to get it clear through Howley up to this left hand side for Boateng goes down under the challenge of Johnston and referee's happy with it I think the ball's still in play there Bex got it as he goes down and the free kick has yeah. been given Dundee's way and Callum McGregor I'm not sure what he's complaining about there it looked like a, a foul from where we are yeah, might I well have had one just before yeah, that yeah exactly Liam I think so I think so I think it was a free kick uh, on Botang uh, I think he was caught and the referee let it go and I think that's why maybe he gave the give the, the free kick this is an opportunity for Dundee just right on half time put it into an area good delivery get the big bodies up there they've got Shocknessy they've got Lamy they've got uh, I'm looking Bakiako um, get it into that position and make Celtic work Beck will take the free kick here on this left hand side a couple of yards from the main stand side touchline into the box it comes flicked away it's only half clear though Lamy keeps it alive sliding in still he has it Ricky Lamy he's got nobody in dark blue to help him though and he can only put it behind for the goal kick yeah I think he did the right thing actually what he didn't want to do is get caught on the ball and sell it to take it off him and then break very quickly just on half time good experience it is out of play for a Celtic throw in on this near side in fact there's no time to take it half time 0-0 as it was at full time in Celtic's last home match that was against St Johnston a couple of weeks ago a few weeks ago Dundee would draw with St Johnston the subsequent week and it largely frustrated Celtic from open play albeit the champions have had a couple of opportunities dies in Maida the ball in the net ruled out for offside did force a save from Trevor Carson a couple of things went into the side net from Yang and Taylor but Celtic will be wanting to create more in the second half to go alongside the dominance, dominance they've had in the possession stakes but that opportunity for Dundee we think uh, potentially Joe Hart actually managed to get a touch on the initial effort from either McCowan or um, 
Bakayoko inside the penalty and it did break back to Zach Robinson with the second opportunity but he couldn't get anything on to it kind of slipped as he went for goal and that means at half time here Celtic nil Dundee nil Celtic at home to Dundee there for us Liam McLeod and Pat Bonner yeah Celtic were left frustrated in their last home game as St Johnston held them to a goalless draw and that is the half time scoreline here and Dundee this time frustrating the champions though they have had opportunities indeed Dyson Maida the ball in the net a tight offside call went against the Japanese though after a long clip ball found them it was a wonderful first touch before he executed it tremendously well into the bottom right corner and after the VAR check the flag had gone up before that and the VAR agreed and it was no goal and in fact although Celtic had other opportunities Maida testing Carson the Dundee goalkeeper has been pretty underworked too underworked for Brendan Rodgers liking and Dundee could quite easily have scored up the other end as well a great save by Joe Hart to deny Luke McCowan and when it bounced back from uh, the Hart save towards Zach Robinson he slipped just at the crucial moment with the goal gaping for him so a real warning sign for Celtic they are in a game here Packy Bonner they've had over 70% of the ball yep. they've spent most of the game camped deep inside the Dundee half yet they could be behind yeah very. That, that's the threat but it's nil nil the opposition will always get a chance but I just think they need more composure just on the final path on the final control inside the box they've got into great areas the intensity has been there but sometimes it just takes maybe they're, they're too intense and maybe they're, they're, they're not able to uh, and, and they run right through the team it's not, it's not just one player it's every player seems to be uh, having that sort of fealty that, that they just can't pick a pass or they can't get the shot away or they can't get that maybe taking an extra touch and that, that can, I'm sure that's what Brendan Rodgers will speak to them at half time keep the intensity up to a point but in the final and third show a little bit more composure Dundee without a win in 40 attempts against Celtic coming into this one they could have the lead Celtic could also have the lead half time though it's Celtic nil Dundee nil Grant Irvin gets the second half underway thank you for joining us here BBC Radio Scotland Extra 810 medium wave and on digital the second half Celtic nil Dundee nil Celtic on the attack and he made a change at the break Maida down towards the byline being forced out towards the main stand side touchline as Celtic go right to left in the green and white hoops Dundee in the all dark blue with gold flashes uh, very nice kit it has to be said Gustav Lagerbilka incidentally has come on for Nat Phillips for the start of the second half as Dundee win it back in the midfield it's dinked forward and Lagerbilka is there to turn it back to his goalkeeper and we'll get thoughts on that Celtic change from Packy. yeah I don't know what, what happened whether he's that head knock that he had uh, in, in the first half that maybe has caused him a, a bit of concern or maybe that he just uh, said there was so much of the ball that they feel that they could probably just ease him into, into the game um, you know his first his first start uh, or maybe he's felt something uh, slightly and don't want any more injuries but anyway it's a, it's a, it's a quick change it's made at half time decisive uh, like a Belka coming in almost to play again play alongside uh, Liam Scales again he yeah, scales up the pitch here as he, he elects to roll it back to Lager Bilka and then to Scales again. Midway inside the Dundee half, over on the left hand side, lovely little chip ball by Scales, Turnbull on the turn, pulls it back and it's over the bar from Kyogo. Uh, that was a good ball from Liam Scales, lovely little dink uh, and a good run uh, from Turnbull. Just it can almost come to uh, Kyogo behind them slightly and he can almost dig it out. Uh, I thought he could have maybe done a little bit better to get over the top of the ball, but uh, high and well over the crossbar, Trevor Carson's crossbar. Incidentally, if you're interested, 34 minutes into the game, Feyenoord are 3-1 up on Herenveen in the Eredivisie. They've got problems up front, but they lead 3-1. And still not at half-time in that game, the Dutch champions who Celtic face in their opening Champions League game in De Kuyp on Tuesday evening goes out for a Celtic throw and over on the far side I think Celtic wanted a free kick though they did that'll be a tough game Feyenoord there's no question about that uh, especially away from home to be well tested Celtic Liam Scales moving it back and away to Lager Bilka so Celtic with Hart and goal Johnston Lager Bilka Scales and Taylor O'Reilly McGregor Turnbull Yang and Maida up there with Kyogo 
for Dundee Carson and goal Kershock, Nisi Lamy, Beck, Boateng sitting, Robinson, Robertson, McCowan and Howley and Bakayoko. Here comes Celtic. Oh, Celtic in the box. Looked like a hand potentially oh. was used there. The referee doesn't think so inside the box. Came off one of the Dundee defenders. I think it was Robertson actually bounced back onto. Wow, it looked, it looked a handball to well, me. Is, we'll know about it, it. it is, we'll know about it. Here comes Yang down the right. Level with the six yard line. Really well defended by Owen Beck. It's uh, first proper look for me at Owen Beck. He's on loan from Liverpool. He looks like a fantastic left back. But Made nobody, nobody has. Sorry, Liam, going back to the handball situation. We, we've called it, I think, all around us here almost looked at and said that, that looked like a handball but nobody actually uh, went to the referee or nobody put their hand up or, or made any reaction so maybe we're seeing something completely different from up well, here well the ball hasn't gone out yet once it goes out of play we'll know if it's being if it's still being looked at and if it requires an official on-field review or not it scales in possession for Celtic left at the centre circle they don't put the ball out of play terribly often Celtic that's the thing <laughs> gone for a while it can't go on you can't d- 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 can you pull it back after it's gone ball's three the, four the minutes ball's got to go out of play first here's Taylor looking for Maida does go out of play this time out for a throw in to Celtic level with the 18 no suggestion when it's being looked at so it's obviously although it looked like it came off Robertson's hand it hasn't done wow there's Turnbull my eyes aren't the same as they used to be anyway that's for sure <laughs> Scales back into yeah. the centre circle for Lagerbilke. Everyone apart from Joe Hart's in the Dundee half again. This was the case for most of that first half. Scales comes forward for Celtic. Short ball to Turnbull. Wide left of the penalty area for Maida. Low ball to the 18 for Taylor. Taylor holding off Robertson. Now it's with Maida. Maida's pass for Turnbull. He goes down. Ooh, he's got the free kick as well. That's right on the edge of the penalty right area. The Might even, I thought it was. Turnbull was he's certainly in the box and he went down. It'll be checked, but it's right. It looked right on the line. The referee's given it about a about a half a yard outside uh, where he's put down the, the marker. But I thought that was right on the line. Oh, I thought that was very tight. But Celtic have almost again dominated, uh, dominated the play in this start of the second half. Dundee's just fallen. Yeah, back they're taking a possible penalty goal. here, Packy. Yeah, it looked to me certainly. I thought my initial reaction was that's a penalty. And we'll find out if well, Stephen Kirkland, the VAR, agrees. It's easy to see it on, 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 on the film, isn't it? You know, you just have got to stop it and see if his foot is inside the box. Uh, and it's very, very close. I've just got when it's a penalty. It's been given! Penalty! Yeah. Celtic pen! And Dundee left crestfallen, but early in the second half. Celtic have a spot kick. Yeah. And David Turnbull's ready to take already, having won it. The surprising thing for me there is the referee's right beside it. The referee is almost standing about a couple of yards away. And when you see that, uh, you, you've got to be able to call that. You know, you don't need VAR to call it if, if, if it's inside the box. But he'd give it almost yeah. a yard outside. Turnbull to take. Celtic had 11 penalties last season. They scored eight of them. First chance from the spot. Turnbull right footed. And it goes right down the middle. And the champions break the deadlock in what has been a stuffy game for them. Turnbull completely decisive from the spot as he hammers home his third of the season and it's Celtic 1, Dundee 0. Yeah, this is a crucial goal for Celtic. They started off the second half dominating the play, pushing Dundee back, getting lots of play in around the edge of the box uh, and uh, of course they've been delighted to get the goal. Just opens up the game now a little bit. Uh, I'm, I'm sure Dundee won't change too much early on um, they'll, they'll still be hoping to maybe get something out of the game with, a, with a, a couple of late chances in the game so they won't change too much but it just gives Celtic a little bit more confidence yeah it does and it's a blow for Tony Doherty having got through that entire first half without conceding to then go behind to a penalty early in the second half will be of much annoyance to the Dundee boss who's prowling his technical area down there for Brendan Rodgers though he'll hope that that just releases the shackles of his team because yeah. the shackles haven't been off at any point yet this season no no and, and, and you know you need you need a little bit of luck too and a l- lucky break and just to open up the defences that, that are, are packed in there this is a chance for Dundee to put a little bit of pressure on long ball played up yeah it comes off scales head it's not decisive though Dundee have it inside the Celtic box before it's eventually scooped to safety by Taylor 
and then Celtic away on a counter with Yang Maida ahead of him just an awkward bounce just to check his run pull the ball back facing his own goal as Camley rolls it to McGregor he plays it right to left of the circle for O'Reilly with a little flick for Taylor Taylor then moving forward rolling it out wide left for O'Reilly Turnbull in support elects to go back the way to Scales then forward to McGregor back to Scales and then forward to O'Reilly O'Reilly to Maida now it's with Turnbull Turnbull back to Scales and the problem for Dundee's plan A is gone plan A was let's try and get a nil-nil out of this yeah I wouldn't go, think they'll go too much to plan B yet <laughs> to be honest because uh, you know they can still get something out of it a draw would be a great result for them coming out of here at Celtic Park so they don't have to panic a little bit um, big goal at Far Park Pack 8's come for St Mirren against Motherwell 1-0 to the Paisley side as they look to go above the steel men in the table and as things stand they'd be second a couple of points adrift of Celtic and it's Celtic in possession over on that right hand side with Yang who's tripped to the ground the referee says no foul Robinson picks up for the D forward it comes to Bakayoko left hand side attacking Lager Bielka looking for support to arrive he's waiting a little bit too long the Swede gets the toe onto it but still it's alive for Dundee Beck to McCowan back to Beck left hand side of the Celtic box with the defender and behind for a Dundee corner 54 on the clock 1-0 to Celtic but Dundee responding well yeah that, that came from Yang giving the ball away uh, he's struggling in the game Yang he hasn't really really in a 1v1 situation won many of them um, he looks that he wants to go and take people on but it hasn't come off for him and he gave the ball away on that occasion and Dundee broke down the left hand side eventually now they've got their corner and lots of bodies in the six yard box Scott Tanzer with that simmering goal 10 minutes into the second half at Fir Park Dundee corner drilled back towards the penalty spot Kerr is a wild swipe at it up into the air it goes trying to keep it alive as Finn Robertson as it's moved out to this right hand side for Howley goes down no free kick Celtic come away with it O'Reilly to Turnbull and now McGregor into the path of Johnston Celtic playing it out perfectly as Johnston elects to turn it back to Lager Bielka yeah I was surprised at that corner I've got to say an out swinger uh, when everybody was in round and in, almost inside the six yard box and there was nobody out to come and attack an out swinging corner Dunfermline 1 0 up at Queen's Park in the championship Queen's Park 0 Dunfermline 1 here in the premiership 1 0 to Celtic but here's Luke McCowan rolling it to the right hand side of the box for Robertson passes it back to McCowan he's gone for the delicate finish towards the top left corner he's put it wide it's a real chance for Luke McCowan he'll be so annoyed he's not hit the target and it stays Celtic 1 Dundee nil on 56 yeah it was a good break good break obviously down the right uh, obviously Maeda just um, struggled to, to get a hold of the ball Cammy Kerr took it off and then he broke with ease down uh, the right side uh, and, and eventually when the ball come to Luke McCowan he had the chance to get a, get a good whip on it but he's kind of almost aimed outside the post to get it and never came back in uh, but it was a good good chance for Dundee both teams down to 10 now at Gayfield are both leading 2-0 the Adrianians have been reduced in numbers Liam McStravick's been sent off as Celtic come forward down the left of the byline oh. pulled back by Maida no takers in green and white and oh. Dundee are able to get it away it was good play Maida using his little bit of speed there to get past uh, Cammy Kerr getting to the byline and cut it across sure if Kyogo's missed it or it's just gone beyond them but but certainly it was a great great chance for Celtic to make it two. 4 0 Montrose against Edinburgh City in League One Hamilton are 1-0 up on Aloha and it's 2-2 now between Cove Rangers and Kelty and Celtic prepared to make a couple of changes I think uh, Rio Hitate is going to be on shortly three minutes shy of the hour here with Celtic leading by 1-0 and there's going to be a debut for Luis Palma who since signing for Celtic has played he was in action for Honduras in the international break we'll get to him in just a moment Celtic in possession with Maida he skips in field away from Boateng rolling it to the right for O'Reilly gets away from Beck gets a break of the ball O'Reilly pulls it back towards the 18 but it's cut out there by Howley and Dundee able to come away with it with McCowan who had that chance Packy just a 
couple of minutes ago inside the Celtic box shaped towards that top left corner and he couldn't find the target yeah he's playing in an almost kind of almost forward midfield position gets himself into good positions we've seen the in the first half where he, where he got into a great position forcing Joe Hart into the save uh, and now getting this particular effort from him also so he, he, he is a player with, qual with decent quality and, and uh, he's getting himself into really good positions the two subs waiting to come on for the champions Celtic in possession McGregor to Scales inside the centre circle out to Turnbull on this near side Turnbull steps in field tries to work it through to Taylor it's well read though by Robertson Dundee of it back Lamy runs into trouble though gives it straight to Yang Turnbull looking for Kyogos kind of just blocked off by Beck his route towards goal and Carson comes out and claims yeah again you know another good opportunity for Celtic just a final ball is letting them down Boateng has it for Dundee out to Beck who's been well, momentarily ransacked the Celtic, trying to win it back. It's going out for a Celtic throw-in. Yang was expecting that to go the other way, and now the changes will be made. And Yang will play no more part in this match. He's going to be replaced by Luis Palma. He scored and set one up, actually, in a win over Granada in the CONCACAF Nations League. And on he comes. Yeah, it'll be interesting for Palma. To see as he got those, those qualities he's been missing. Um, obviously he comes with a bit of a reputation and Turnbull the goal scorer is going to be withdrawn to be replaced by Hatate. yeah well Hatate's quality we've seen him we know what he what he can do obviously it's just about his fitness coming back in we've seen him the change when he came on the pitch in Aberdeen in that, that first game uh, earlier on but he picked up the knock and just put him out but he's a quality quality player and the fans love him here as you can hear, Matate on, Palma on, 1-0 Celtic. Tony Doherty yet to make a change. There's O'Reilly, Celtic going to put this to bed as soon as possible. We've hit the hour in Parkhead. Celtic 1, Dundee 0. Here is Taylor. Low ball out to this left-hand side for Luis Palma. Plays it off Kerbricks back to Palma. Now Taylor flicks it back to scales well the one one thing that Tati will do is we know he, he, he won't sit in the position he'll move he'll find the space he'll, he'll move all over the pitch in those forward areas and it's really difficult for the opposition for somebody to pin him down there he goes Kyogo, right away Hatate trying to play it back to Kyogo goes down yes free kick to Celtic well by Robertson a Celtic free kick just outside the penalty area again and slightly left the centre yeah it's a really good position for Celtic to somebody to go and hit the target this time it's about four or five yards outside uh, the 18 yard box just slightly left of centre uh, looks like Kyogo is over it Matt O'Reilly is over it chance then chance here and an opportunity for the champions to double their lead O'Reilly and Kyogo stand over the free kick. Certainly looks as though it favours the right footer. Kyogo is that right footer standing over it. Matati's in a crouched position just in front of the wall, flapping his arms around. What's that, that, all that about? <laughs> Kyogo takes into the wall. Dundee trying to get it away as the Celtic fans claim for hand. The Dundee wall blocked it. It wasn't a great free kick from Kyogo for a hashi. He scored a hat-trick against the D in his first season. That's Celtic in a 6-0 win here. And he's not threatening Trevor Carson's goal on that occasion. Stays 1-0 to the champions. Yeah, it was bad execution, wasn't it? Uh, because it was a big wall, I've got to say. They've got to put height in the wall, but they hit almost mid-rift. Uh, he didn't get any height on, on, on a strike and the opportunity was gone. Lamy well, clears up towards Robinson. Eating the sandwich, he goes down. No free kick. Stayed down with Robinson. Celtic play on though. Here's Hatati. Rolling it back to McGregor. The Celtic skipper chipping it in. Show goes there. Goal! Of course he's there. And Kyogo Furuhashi hung in the air and heads it into the top right corner. Away from Trevor Carson. 
And that will probably do for Dundee. It will certainly do for the champions. And it will certainly do for Kyogo and his manager. It's Celtic 2, Dundee nil. Yeah, well, two quality players involved in, in this goal. Obviously, McGregor has the quality of hitting the pass. And then the run from Kyogo just out, starts outside the box, just on the arc, and just runs. Yeah, he's just onside. Great timing of the run. Uh, and the ball just played over the top and he gets in and gets his head on it to knock it away from Trevor Krasnick the centre half's looking the shot as he's looking for will the goalkeeper come will I go and track him uh, no point afterwards having that conversation do something but it was a great execution what a ball by Callum McGregor absolutely yeah. magnificent from Callum McGregor Hibs went 2-0 up Dylan Venta adding to the Will Dennis own goal I was hearing in my ear that Kilmarnock have pulled one back pretty quickly in that game. Get confirmation of that shortly. Still Hearts leading Aberdeen 1 0 and St Mirren 1 0 up against Motherwell. The second half, a few minutes old in Dingwall in the later kickoff. Ross County 0, Livingston 0. Earlier it was St Johnston 0, Rangers 2. Goes from Danilo and Matondo winning it for Rangers against the bottom side, St Johnston, who are only bottom because they've scored uh, a goal fewer than Aberdeen will be the goal difference now working against them as well double change for Dundee Mulligan and Tiffany will come on Zach Robinson will come off on comes Mulligan really talented midfield player and he will be joined on the pitch by Scott Tiffany who looks as though he's going to replace Ryan Howley he came into the starting 11 at Tiffany's expense today 64 and a half 2-0 then to Celtic and Dundee and they just will hope to get out of here without the scoreline being too heavy against them because there is the danger now that Celtic are beginning to click into gear we are waiting for them to do that that's for sure and what Brendan Rodgers are wants a clean sheet packy that'll be yep. so important for him he did manage one against St Johnston last time out here and obviously against Rangers in the derby they lost a couple of goals against Ross County in the opening day and they want Joe Hart to keep a clean sheet now yeah, it's always that, his team scored another couple it's always that combination Liam that you want to create chance you want to score goals but you've got to have the defensive side right also here's Maida for Celtic in behind little flicks good Johnston oh, off the bar save he might even have come off the post on the way round rather than the bar but either way it comes off the frame and it's gone behind for a corner as Packy says the goalkeeper must have got a touch I think he got behind a touch. for the corner I think he got a touch I think it was a good save reflex save he's just stuck up a hand and deflected it I think on, onto the post crossbar whatever uh, but it stayed out of the net which is the most important for Dundee Kyle Vassell got that Kilmarnock goal Kilmarnock one hips two but, well, that was the really corner good comes play. in but it's gone behind off a Dundee play at the back end of the box for another corner on the Celtic right yeah you can see that just a little bit of quality that's come onto the pitch now with a tatty you can see the relationships the movement uh, and, and it's all coming together for Celtic and confidence is high 2-0 to Hearts against Aberdeen as O'Reilly takes the corner headed away there by Bakayoko picked up by Johnston flashes it out to Palma on that right hand side looks up at the Dundee box in comes the cross headed clear by Lamy it breaks onto the edge of the centre circle where Johnston will slip it through towards Kyogo who's on to it right hand side pulls it back intelligently for O'Reilly who slips it into the bottom left and the champions are running amok all of a sudden is this the moment when their season really takes off following up the derby win across the city with a pummeling of Dundee here after a stodgy first half Kyogo this time the set up man for O'Reilly who slides the ball home for his third of the season and it's Celtic's third of the afternoon Celtic 3, Dundee nil. yeah great run again from Kyogo somebody's got a match his run on I'm afraid but it was a great run down the side uh, of the full back cuts it back perfectly to O'Reilly and all he do is first time open up his left foot and he strokes it into the corner of the net across the goalkeeper really really good goal but that movement we talked about it that intensity it's all starting to come together now for for Celtic and the confidence is high it's brilliantly taken by O'Reilly I mean he's such a cool customer isn't he I mean he covers just about every blade of grass in the game and he's 
He was challenged by Brendan Rodgers to score more goals and he's doing that for him. Three now for the season and that is exactly what his managers wanted to see from him. Yeah, and, and there, there was Oh, Hugh coming on, Packy, for Kyogo meantime, sorry. Yeah, and, and that's, that's a good decision, obviously. I don't know what happened him when he had to go off the pitch, Kyogo, but it didn't seem to affect him too much, actually. I don't know if his shoulder went out or maybe there was something else that he needed to get get fixed as he's strapping on it and it came loose or whatever. Uh, but certainly, uh, listen, the goal he scored, the quality of the, the, the ball through from McGregor, and then the movement and, and then again the movement for that third goal down the side he's always on the move which is fantastic uh, and that that will help him no end delighted with that contribution that he's made uh, and that I know obviously comes on up front now when they're three uh, nil up and that's uh, that gives maybe him an opportunity to get into them but Dundee now has got to hang in here uh, they can't allow this to go they, they've been doing quite well defensively organisation structure not really getting doing anything in an attacking sense, uh, but now has all come apart for them in the start of the second half. They could argue maybe with with, with the goal that Kyogo scored that <clears throat> there was it might have been a free kick on. Did they come again? Maida on the right hand side. The cross is hanging into the area. And it's going to evade Hatati, kept alive by Palma. Rolls it back to Taylor at the left angle of the box. And with Luis Palma, rolls it with the right to the left of the penalty area for Hitati level with the six finds O oh, looking to get it back to Hitati goes down Dundee clearing eventually through Tiffany only as far as Palma back it comes to McGregor and then he finds O'Reilly he goes back to Lager Bielka he, certainly Dundee can't complain about the score line as Hitati shoots into the ground and it bounces right through to Carson's been total domination from Celtic not quite from the very start of the game and Dundee did have that opportunity that Joe Hart kept out in the first half from McCowan but by and large this has been a three goal game perhaps it will be more by full time There's still over 20 to play Celtic 3 nothing up yeah the only criticism I think in the first half was composure in around the box but now they're starting to pick passes now the confidence is high now you can see them uh, almost making the runs and they know the ball is going to come to them from the quality on the pitch it's now back into the centre circle with Ricky Lamy to his right for Shocknessy short ball out to Cami Kerr on this near side met by Palma does break Dundee's way with Finn Robertson rolls it infield opportunity for chance. Mulligan yeah he's done well and then it's pulled back across the face of goal by Bakayoko but only for scales albeit the flag's gone up anyway Celtic 3 Dundee nil. yeah he was offside uh, Bakayoko but but it, he, he was clear at the back post when the ball came to him uh, and uh, you know as there, Johnson has got to open up that body and see where he is he doesn't need to come inside there's nobody there so Hearts 2 Aberdeen 0 Kilmarnock 1 Hibernian 2 Motherwell 0 St Mirren 1 goalless Ross County Livingston they're 15 minutes behind earlier it was 2-0 Rangers at St Johnston in the Championship Battle of the 10 men are both 2 Airdrieonians 0 Morton have equalised against Dundee United Robbie Muirhead with the goal so one apiece at Capolo Queen's Park 0 Dunfermline 2 now and goalless between Wraith Rovers and Cali Thistle in League One, 3-0 Annan against Sterling Albion, 2-2 Cove Kelty, goalless Falkirk, Queen of the South, 1-1 Hamilton Alloa, 5-1 Montrose now against Edinburgh City. And in League Two, East Fife 2-0 up on Clyde, Elgin 2-0 up on Dumbarton, 2-2 for for Spartans, 1-0 Peterhead at home to Bonnyrigg, and 4-0 Stennis Muir against Stenrar. And that is you up to date with all the score lines and all the SPFL matches this afternoon. Keep up to date at bbc.co.uk slash sports. Scotland, the Celtic come forward with Palma. Low ball to the edge of the box is cleared by McCow and it kind of bounced back off in his own... Well, one of the Celtic players actually and bounces oh. back to his goalkeeper and Carson holds on, but this has been a real struggle for Dundee, particularly since half-time. Celtic coming at them and looking dangerous every time they do so. Dundee down the right-hand side, chasing after it's Robertson. Scales gets there and puts it out for a throw-in on this near side to the visitors. Looks as though Packy's going to get to see another new Celtic signing, making his debut, Paolo Bernardo. Will come on for Matt O'Reilly. On loan from Benfica. 
and Igi will enjoy getting the final 20 odd minutes of this one yeah listen uh, we need to see these players to see what they can do and, uh, you know, normally I, I don't make up my mind about them until I see them in a couple of games and see the qualities and see how they fit into a team uh, but it's, uh, it's important to get them on the pitch especially now when you're in a, a commanding position get them used to this crowd get them used to this venue, ven venue and uh, see how they contribute yep, Paolo Bernardo comes on always when I saw him first mooted with a move to Celtic Pack he seemed like a more exotic version of Paul Bernard who's Aberdeen's record signing Paolo Bernardo is on <laughs> now and the Celtic fans will enjoy seeing him with uh, 17 of the 90 left there'll be a, obviously a few added on at the end of it as Paul Scales comes forward uh, Liam Scales comes forward and finds O and then back to Scales out wide left for Palma he's level with the edge of the D of the Dundee box plays it infield to Taylor back to Palma and now with Scales misunderstanding with Taylor though plays it in behind him and Robertson can push it forward for Dundee as the sliding Nagarbielka puts it out for a throw in on this near side Simon Murray has broken the deadlock in Dingwall Ross County 1 Livingston nil in the game that was delayed because of the Livingston bus broke down only in Scottish football this is Taylor missing the challenge and Dundee have it on this right hand side with Mulligan level with the Celtic penalty spot they need to dig out the cross which he does Lagerbilka heads it away and helped on its way by Rio Hitati and Lamy will pick it up left of the centre circle in his own half but oh doesn't give him any time at all as he charges it down but Lamy's able to get his head onto it and head it up towards halfway well I, I think defenders know that when they're, you're up against uh, the, those Asian players that that's almost in their DNA look at Maeda chasing the ball down They're tireless Tire, tirelessly and, and, and the same with Owen the same with Kyogo when he's on the pitch uh, Hatati's got a, a little knock in the neck there and uh, but he it's, it's almost as if they've been brought up that way Liam and, and that's what the only way that they know how to how to play obviously good technical skills most of them but they've also got that other energy in them yeah their attitude's spot on it is Bernardo first real feel of the ball for the new boy short to Lagervilka now with McGregor and important for Brendan Rodgers that these players get some minutes in the legs ahead of some huge matches coming up none more so than their Champions League opener on Tuesday night live here on Sports Sound De Kaup, where they will take on Feyenoord and Rotterdam yeah well, we, we've always said that you know the new rule of you know the subs that, you know, and the bench how important it is now and uh, for, for, for Celtic uh, for any top team uh, in that matter, especially when you go into Europe uh, that you need a strong bench well, Dundee will just want to get this fixture out the road it's, it's one they've got an awful record in many teams do yeah. of course against Celtic but they all want to just try and get this out of the systems as quickly as possible when they hit the training ground during the week and prepare for Kilmarnock next Saturday yeah listen this is a, is a you know a hit for them that they don't have to worry too much about as long as they don't come out of it with a, with a real hammering but they certainly you know their tactic would be to try to stay in the game for the, un, until the last 20 minutes if they can and maybe if they're in touching distance they can maybe get something out of it but I think the game's gone beyond them now so it's, uh, it's a matter of just keeping the score uh, down and, and making sure that you're ready for the next games well, Manager of the Month award hasn't done Ange Postacoglu any Wonders down south. They are 1-0 down at home to Sheffield United. Goal's just gone in there. Sports scene to come. Highlights of all six Premiership matches which are being played on the Saturday this week. There's another one of those coming up in a couple of weeks. Sports scene on the air at uh, half seven this evening on the BBC Scotland channel. Repeated later on BBC One Scotland. And Dundee with a throw in deep inside their own half over on that left-hand side. 13 of the 90 to play here Celtic leading 3-0 yeah I think it's important for the likes of Lager Belka too that, that he comes off this pitch with no goals against you know from, from a point of view of confidence and he doesn't make any silly mistakes uh, not that he's under severe pressure at the moment but it's just important that he grows into this team uh, from Celtic's perspective because it's an important position those, those centre half positions It's now back with Joe Hart at the edge of his own box. 
Celtic unbeaten in their last 46 home league games 52 overall you can add another one to that one shortly since losing to St Mirren here in January 21 an awesome home record it was Dundee ended an awesome record under Martin O'Neill here when they produced that victory more than 22 years ago only one at Ibrox a couple of months before that only one there since then either as that goes behind off a Dundee head for a Celtic goal kick taken quickly by Hart to Lagerbjölk at the edge of his own box it's ended up being a stroll for the champions that early second half penalty from David Turnbull well it set them on their way didn't it yeah. you know and it's uh, it's a crucial crucial goal because they were struggling up to that point just to break down this well organised Dundee team but that changes the course of course of the game when you get when you get a goal especially from a penalty what kind of impact can the Celtic team have in the Champions League do you think they obviously would rather have Cameron Carter Vickers back in the side for their tilt at that Rio Hitate obviously is coming back at a good time but they're without Abada as well how do you think they'll get on you know Liam it's one of them I'm, I'm, I'm cautious because of the of Carter Vickers not in the team because I think they need that solid solid player uh, at the back just that you know that he's got that pace he's got that strength he reads the game well uh, and especially when, you, when you're attacking especially here at home and uh, you know foreign teams you know we know that they play well in the counter attack and they, and, and they cut you up so you've got to be really switched on they've got the quality of his course Celtic from, a, from an att attacking perspective to get all the best players on the pitch uh, but you have to have as we say, that balance between attacking and defending really spot yeah. on when you come to Europe. So I'm not, I'm not sure. I was hoping this year that they would give it a real go, but uh, we'll see how it all works out. You First know, game's important. I'm going to do better than last year when they picked up just the two points against Shakhtar Donetsk. Liam Scales clearing there. He'll looks as though he'll be set for a Champions League debut to remember in Rotterdam on Tuesday evening. Full coverage of that in Sports Sound. It's an 8 p.m. kickoff. Lazio Atletico Madrid the other game in that group in Rome and then on Thursday Eintracht Frankfurt against Aberdeen quarter to six kick off in the Conference League then in the Europa League Rangers against Real Betis in the City 8pm kick off in that one yeah if you look at this sort of almost type of game today is where you know Celtic have dominated the ball so much and uh, you know Dundee haven't really had them on the counter attack and so you can't judge from this type of no. game how Europe's going to pan out but if you come up against good teams in Europe you know that you can that they'll sit back and they'll hit you and hit you quickly and, and, and fast and that's where you have to be tuned in just like everyone else gets in this country against Celtic as they take a corner Bernardo back to Tate who will move it back wide right here is Palma takes a touch, crosses in with the right foot, flicked away by Dundee, out to this near side. But in the final 10 minutes, and this is just a training session for the Celtic players now. Dundee just want this game to finish at the scoreline, and they've been unable to do what St Johnston did here a few weeks ago, picking up a point. The Celtic won't drop many points here this season, you can be guaranteed of that. Here's Ohyun Gu dinking it to the edge of the box or Bernardo it's just taken away from him though Palma keeps it alive now it's with McGregor square to scales short ball Hitate to the right of the centre circle for Lagerbielka now he's stretching his legs coming forward he's going to shoot a goal it's charged down well by Beck breaks back to McGregor though there's Hitate just taken away from him at the last by Ricky Lamy and then the flick from Bakayoko into the midfield eventually comes out to Robertson on this near side Celtic 3, Dundee nil, 81 and a half on the clock. And it's shifted back by McCowan to Kerr, then back to Carson. Not much Trevor Carson could have done about the goals, Packy, I wouldn't suggest. No, maybe maybe the one over the top that, uh, you know, I've seen Joe Shockton see holding his hands up. This, could you have come, could you have started a wee bit higher up the pitch uh, when, when McGregor had the ball, so you could maybe intercept it, maybe about, you know, but it, I think it was such a good pass. Uh, that that uh, I'm not sure. I'd like to see it again, actually, to see if he could have done that. But but certainly, apart from that, I'd, 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 obviously the penalty, no chance. Yeah, right down the middle from Turnbull. Celtic pick up deep inside their own half here. Dundee were chasing a lost cause on that occasion. Lager Bilka clears. There's O oh, moving it back the way, and then it comes off McCowan and out for a Celtic throw in on this near side. It's bold infield to Greg Taylor. 
it goes back to Joe Hart. Yeah, I'm just I'm just looking obviously at the new players that we haven't we haven't seen so far. They've just gradually just got themselves into these games. They haven't done anything you would be jumping up and down about yet so far. Uh, and uh, I think that'll all come when they get their match fitness up and just get used to their fellow players, the relationships. Palma stepping in field, Kami Kerr sticking with him, but Palma moves it to the right of the circle. Lager Bielka out to the right hand side, north stand side for Maida. Back to Lager Bielka. Seven to play, the 90. Finds it Tate, his ball forwards cut out and it breaks all the way back onto halfway. And that side of the pitch over there, bathing in sunshine. Scales with a long ball, looking for Palma. Over the head it goes. And, uh, an applause for Liam Scales for the effort from Lewis Palma, but it's a Dundee throw-in on this near side. Yeah, well, they haven't really been under a lot of pressure. High up the pitch, I think Liam's done OK again, just settling in, in, into the team. There's a long ball forward, Dundee chasing after it, in behind the defence goes McCowan, right-hand side, he's got a chance to slip it to Tiffany, he might get a second opportunity, the first was blocked. Oh, he's rolled back the way, chance here and well over the crossbar from Bakayoko and uh, goal kick will be given to Celtic but what an opportunity for Bakayoko I mean he really should be rippling the net with that one he did Liam Scales was sliding in uh, but, but maybe put him off but certainly he got to get his body over the ball and hit the net there was a, a good play play down the side uh, again uh, I think it was Luke McCowan again was it or was it was it uh, Finley Robertson McCowan down the right yeah. down the right he's, he's he's done well getting into good positions showed a little bit of pace also uh, player, I don't know, yeah. don't know whether uh, like a Belka was struggling for pace or whether it was good pace from Luke McCowan but, but certainly uh, another big 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 chance uh, for Dundee they've had two or three in this game you've got to say they've failed uh, again to, to take them which is critical when you're up against Celtic Wow, Kilmarnock have come from 2 nothing down to level at 2-2. Vassell and Wright cancelling out the goals from the Dennis OG inventor. To Kilmarnock 2, Hibernian 2 at Rugby Park. Still 2-0 to Hearts, cruising to a victory as they usually do against Aberdeen and Edinburgh. And goals from Oda and Boyce doing the damage. And Aberdeen's next game against Eintracht Frankfurt. Here's Ohyun Gyu at the edge of the Dundee box. Shoots blocked by Shocknessy. 85 in the clock as that goes out for a Celtic throw in wide on that right hand side. Yeah, a bit ambitious from all that time. I thought he could have played my aid in. He, he kept his run going and just slide him through and he's he's taken a shot on and, and uh, that was a, a decent block, but it was I think it was too far out. Maida out on that right hand side. And Celtic come forward. It's Bernardo might get back onto it here. He's inside the area. Looking for O, and then it's rifled clear by Boateng. And then Taylor goes all the way back to Joe Hart. Into the closing stages of this one. Rangers with a 2 0 win earlier. Celtic 3 0 up and cruising here. Hearts 2 0 up and cruising against Aberdeen. 2 2 between Kilmarnock and Hibbs. St Mirren leading Motherwell 1 0 at Fir Park. And Ross County 1 0 up on Livingston and Dingwall. We've still got about 20 minutes to play of that one, though. Celtic pick up with Lager Bilka playing it to Johnston then back to the Swede forward to Maida he goes all the way back to his keeper Hart plays it short to Scales Scales then up to halfway out to the left for Taylor and Taylor goes back to Lager Bilka and then back to his goalkeeper still 3-1 finer incidentally they are run about the well, five minutes shy of the hour, they lead 3 1 against Heron Veen. They warm up for Celtic on Tuesday. It's Johnston for Hatati. And he turns, rolls it left hand side of the Dundee box for Palma. Into the area he goes, blocked by Kerr and behind for a Celtic corner. As they look to varnish up the scoreline, which is already heavily in their favour at 3 0. Palma over in this near side to take it, short to Hatati to the box for Taylor back to Palma Palma looking to drop the shoulder onto the right and then Beck stuck with him he's largely had a good game as Beck yeah he has 
he, he looks lightweight, doesn't he? But but he actually sticks to his task really, really well. And he's got a wee turn of pace too. Uh, I, I've been impressed with that young man, actually. A couple of loans before. He's on loan from Liverpool. He was at Bolton and then he was out in Portugal. But, uh, for Malikau last season. It's two very different loans. Bolton and then Portugal. Yeah. And now he's in Dundee. It's all about learning. It's yeah. all about getting experience. Wales under 21 international as was Ryan Howley who came off earlier having started the game for the D 88 on the clock they're at home to Kilmarnock next Saturday afternoon for Dundee as Johnston picks up side football to Hatati in the halfway line and on the turn he passes it back to Scales in the centre circle it is Johnston yeah, I'd not like him to turn back actually um but he, he again, of course, I think is just settling back into the team after being out injured for a while. So it's good to get to see him on the pitch again. Of course, it was Josip Juranovic who played right back for Celtic in the Champions League last season. Chance for Johnston to play in Europe for the first time. A solid Johnston, solid player. Yeah, you, you rarely see him make a mistake. As uh, Taylor prepares to take a throw in for Celtic level with the edge of the D of the Dundee box. Pulled back to Palma and into the midfield and then back to the centre circle Lager Bielka out to Maida on that right hand side so we tick into minute 90 Maida round the back of the defender who reacted relatively well chance and off the post off the post that was the opportunity for Celtic this flick towards goal it came bouncing off the post on the reverse side yeah it was Johnson that time you know linking in with Made it initially tried to to take on uh, Beck and, and, and play the ball past him and use his strength and pace and the ball just came to Alistair Johnson and, and he hit it with the outside of his foot uh, and, and bent it almost round the goalkeeper but just couldn't get it inside the post. Livingston are level in Dingwall and Bruce Anderson goal on 72 Ross County one Livingston one Simon Murray had given County the lead but it's one apiece now in that game with about 15 left to play of that one nothing has changed elsewhere including that Killy Hibbs game tied at 2-2 I think Montgomery's first game in charge of the Highbies we're into stoppage time four have been added and it's a free kick to Celtic to be taken by Palma about 10 yards from the near side touchline midway inside Dundee territory it's Palma Hands and hips, stands and eyes up the Dundee box. Into the penalty area it comes. Diving header away by Kerr. And in the first of those four added minutes. Palma on this near side. Finds Hatate. Looking to work it back to Luis Palma. Level with the Dundee six this time. And they get the nutmeg. He's managed it as well. It's brilliant from Palma. Back to Hatate. Onto the left foot. His attempted cross is cut out by Mulligan. Kerr heads it away. And McCowan completes the clearance. Scales out to Taylor on this near side. There was good skill there, Packy, wasn't yeah. it, by Palma? Yeah, yeah, he's been very safe in his, his approach so far. He's got the ball, he's he's kept it really well, he hasn't given it away, he's passed it, uh, but he hasn't almost thrown in those little skills that you would expect, uh, but that'll come. Big switch of play for Celtic out to Dyson Maida on the right, shielding his eyes from the sun. As he controls, passes it back to Hatate. Now it's Bernardo, oh, and it's a penalty. No, it won't be actually. It's bounced off his foot yeah, first. Neat. So although it's come off the hand, no penalty. Here's Hatate from distance, well over the bar, and it stays Celtic three Dundee nil. Yeah, I think it's the right decision. It's uh, bounced you know. off his foot first before yeah, it hit his hand. Yeah, yeah, it comes back back up off him and and that. But uh, yeah, we're just going back to Palma. I think that's been the feature of the game from him. You know, he had a lovely diagonal pass there from left away over to right. He sees, he sees a good pass. His weight of pass also is very, very good. Uh, but uh, you know, it's about him trying to get match fitness too. There's no question about that. It's an official penalty to view here, but the referee knows exactly what's happened. Grant Irvin and waves play on as Tiffany gives chase for Dundee down the left-hand side. What I will say about Dundee, though, is that, you know, at a point in the game, it looked as if they were going to collapse, wasn't it? You know, when it went to three, uh, and, and that they stuck in well, and uh, they've, they've continued to do the defensive side quite well. Uh, they didn't give up from that perspective. They just haven't been up the pitch uh, and enough, probably. Yeah. They have had big chances, I've got to say, but uh, 
you would expect them to be a little bit more in the way of, of trying to, to create chances uh, as more in the counter-attack that they've, they've been successful. Last time they were here, it looked like they were going to get a point. And they lost 3-2, a late Yakamakis goal, completing his hat-trick. Saw Celtic win 3-2. Slager Bielka rolls it forward to Bernardo and back to Scales. Well into the stoppage time that was added on at the end. All the score lines available at bbc.co.uk slash Sports Scotland and you'll get all the post-match reaction to come. Sports sound on the air until 7 o'clock, of course. The fan section of the programme from 5.30. And that will be peppered with manager and possible player reaction as well from across the board. Big win, this one for Celtic. Quite clearly, Rangers as well. It's St Johnston, Aberdeen losing again to Hearts. Yet to win in the league this season. Pressure on Barry Robson. And as Kyogo's name, man of the match, that long ball's clipped through to... Oh, he's in! Saved by Carson! Saved with the foot! That was a real opportunity. Here comes Celtic again, rifle for goal from distance from Bernardo. And over the crossbar it goes, and it will stay Celtic 3, Dundee 0. Yeah, that was another nice pass from Liam Scales over the top. The defender should have done better, he, he can almost miss kicked and then fell back into the path of, of uh, Atati, and, uh, he, and, and they took the shot on, and... Trevor Carson made the save, could have been easily 4-4. Four, four. Well, that's time up at Celtic Park. Three points, three goals. Minimal fuss for Brendan Rodgers' side. Took them a while, mind. 0-0 at the break it was. Maida's goal ruled out for offside in the first half. And into the second, no problem. David Turnbull with an early penalty after he was brought down just inside the area. Free kick was initially given. Changed a penalty after the VAR review. And Turnbull made no mistake, thumping it down the middle to give Celtic the lead. Kyogo with a wonderful header 11 minutes later from an e equally good ball from Callum McGregor. As it was headed home before Kyogo assisted Matt O'Reilly to slide home his goal as well. Kyogo's fourth of the season. O'Reilly and Turnbull with their third of the season. Dundee will focus now on Kilmarnock in an infinitely more winnable game for them next weekend. For Celtic, it's now all about Feyenoord and the Champions League. It finished here in the Glasgow sunshine in the end. Celtic 3, Dundee 0. Yeah, a good game. Thanks to Derek Ferguson. Motherwell third in the table. St Mirren second in the table. Celtic are top on 13 points after the 3-0 victory over Dundee this afternoon. Let's in here from the Celtic manager, Brendan Rodgers. He is live now with our reporter, Keradine Itzan. Yes, Brendan, I wonder what in particular you liked about your team today. I think the persistence in the game I was happy with. Um, Obviously, on the back of the international break, players just virtually the squad coming together yesterday. Um, so we knew it was, you know, had to uh, to start well in the game. And I thought we, we played well in the first half um, without scoring. Obviously, the, the offside goal and a couple of other chances. Um, and give credit to Dundee. They came and worked very, very hard defensively. But these sometimes these types of game, you haven't set them up for the last 20, 25 minutes of the game. You've got to try and tire out the opposition and then I thought second half we found more spaces and, uh, and looked really really good and threatening in some of our attacking play so uh, so yeah took the goals well we get the uh, we get the penalty which sets us on our way David finishes it well and then the other two goals were fantastic goals so so pleasing overall had to be patient but played some really good football and, and kept a clean sheet yeah, especially in that devastating 20-minute spell just after the interval. Is that the kind of thing you were alluding to beforehand about players having a clearer understanding and things really moving in the direction that you're looking for? Yeah, there's no doubt about that. I think that uh, with some spells of some really good football, but I think there's a fluency, a much better fluency now. And the game's connecting much better. So, uh, so yeah, but today's, a, like I said, it's a, it's a game of patience whilst looking to probe and, and make the openings. Um, so uh, the players did that really well. A lot to like about the, the second and third goals as well in terms of the quality of the goals and the way they were taken. Mm. Yeah, the, the second goal, obviously Callum's pass and, and Kyogo's header was two bits of real quality. It gives us a, a comfort in the game. I was really pleased with the third goal because uh, we win the ball back, we're really aggressive, we get numbers around the ball, win it. 
and then we, we penetrate with it. Ali makes a great pass. Uh, Kyogo's running off the ball, and then he, he shows great skill to, to play to Matt O'Reilly. And, and Matt's been a player that, you know, the beginning of this season he's been been excellent for me. You know, he's he, defensively strong, wins the ball, but he looks like he's going to score in every single game he plays in, and uh, and probably should have. So, uh, but timed his run perfect, great composure on the finish, and probably unlucky that we didn't have a few others. Ali Johnson gets in a couple of times and. Uh, didn't quite finish it. So, um, but we're creating opportunities, which was good. We saw Kyogo come off and then back on it in the first mm. half. Looked like maybe a reoccurrence of his shoulder thing. And also, Nat Phillips played the first half, but not the second, just to bring us up to speed with it. Both of them too. Yeah, Nat just rolled his ankle right in the last action of the first half. So we wanted to just protect him and make sure he's okay and available for Tuesday. Kyogo felt a little bit in his shoulder, and he needed a little bit of work inside. Um, got that sorted and then come out, and then you can see it didn't really. Uh, impact him so uh, so hopefully those two find for Tuesday I saw Liam Scales keeping his place after the mm. impressive performance at Ibox I wonder if he's playing himself into a, a real future at this club and giving himself a chance under your, your stewardship second time around well, I think he was excellent today he showed really good composure I like Liam in many aspects of his game he's composed uh, he's got good balance and giving us that left footed player on the left side really allows you to go and play forward and be more progressive Um but yeah, he's he's done excellent since he's come into the team. Obviously at Rangers, like you said, Ibrox, a real tough game and he, he stood up to that challenge really well. And I thought today you could see the confidence from that. Very composed with the ball, competitive in his defensive qualities. And uh, yeah, I thought he was excellent. And talking of tough games, how much are you relishing Feyenoord and the Champions League and the, the raising of the bar and the, putting yourself at the the top end of uh, European football? Yeah, it's, it's obviously, it's a really exciting time, you know, for... For a team like ourselves to go and be playing, and against some great, uh, great players and a great competition, it's uh, it's what the players worked so hard for last season. So, um, so yeah, we'll we'll prepare for that over the next couple of days. But um, yeah, really exciting time between now and Christmas. And you're getting closer to, to where you want to be as well in terms of the level of the team and the, the Champions League. It accelerates it, doesn't it? Because you just you have to be there. You have to be right. Yeah, listen, it's always going to be a challenge for us. But uh, but for myself, it's just it's it's progress. You know, we uh, were better this week than what we were last week. And we just continue to uh, to develop and um, hopefully we can do that. But that's something that's it's not done just by clicking your fingers. It's time and patience and, and lots of hard work and the players are working very hard. Appreciate your time. Thank Cheers, you. Thank you. Good Good well done.